Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you guys for clicking on this video. Yeah, I don't know if I'll use that intro. But anyway, um, thank you guys for coming to watch this video. You probably already read this in the title, but today I'm going to be sublimating these Dollar Tree wooden spoons. They are bamboo wooden spoons and I did buy them each for $1. I was kind of hoping they would come in a set because they're just spoons, but unfortunately you have to buy them separately. So I got one that was like a spatula, um, a spatula style, and then one that is just like a stirring spoon. So I do want to try to sublimate these. I did already make a video sublimating on wood with lamination sheets, and then also sublimating the wooden tray. If you guys haven't seen that video, I did sublimate that tray using white paint and polyacrylic. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it down below, and then also up in the little cards. So be sure to check out that video. I'm really excited to sublimate the handles of these spoons. Still unsure in this video if I should do white first on one handle and then polyacrylic and sublimate on it. And then on this spoon, only do the polyacrylic to sublimate onto the wood. So maybe I'll do each one. I kind of wanted to do both of them without the white paint and just coat them in polyacrylic and then sublimate on them. But I'm kind of wanting to do one of each. And then I also have a picture frame that I got from Dollar Tree. I don't know if I should save the all acrylic for that wooden picture frame or if I should just do what I said I was gonna do. I think I am going to do both of these in white paint. And then the next video, I will do sublimation straight up on wood with no polyacrylic. I think this would make a really cute gift, like a wedding gift, if you did a matching set and then just put their last name on the handles. So yeah, I thought I would try this out. Maybe you guys can put this or include this in your guys' shop if it does work out. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss any of our videos. Let's get into the video. Here is our print, and I think that it's gonna be a little bit too big. This is at 18%, and it's very close to the edge. I don't know though, it might work. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and see how well it looks on there. As you guys can see, the one with the greenery is a little bit too big, but I think it'll be fine. I just won't have that part pressed. Just mainly the date and the inside of the floral. So I don't want to waste this paper, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it like it is. I'm just going to cut them out. The wind is blowing like crazy outside. Hopefully you guys can't hear that over the video. Forgot to say I did put new designs up in our Etsy shop. So if you guys are wanting some new sublimation designs, be sure to go check out my link in the description. And we have a 20% off sale going on right now. I was on a roll of uploading videos for you guys, and then I got very distracted in making sublimation designs and selling them. So I would love if you guys go check it out. Even if you can't buy anything, be sure to favorite and heart some items. It does help my little shop, and I appreciate you guys for helping my little store or our little store. Yeah, that's where I've been the last few weeks. I love making designs and it pretty much occupies me most of my day. I wanted to say thank you guys for subscribing. I can't believe we are almost to 10,000 subscribers and I appreciate all of you guys that are subscribing, liking the videos, commenting. 
It is my dream to have a successful YouTube channel. So some of you guys have been here for, since I've been on YouTube, which was about four, almost five years now. And it's exciting to see it growing. And I love that you guys are helping me make it grow. <laughs> Okay, I have them all cut out and I need to trim that one up a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and see how they look on the spoons. And then we will go ahead and sand the spoons down really well. And then I'm going to paint them white, the handle white. And I think I am gonna sand from like right here down and paint from here down. It depends on the paper. So let's see how far, or the design. I think I'm gonna do it right there so that the T will fit perfectly trim a little bit more on the top and the bottom so I can make sure that I'm getting it super even. Let me go ahead and get this cut out, then we'll go ahead and sand the spoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand, and like I said, I'm gonna go about right here down, and then I'm going to paint it. I'll show you guys the paint, and we'll get started. I'm gonna go ahead and lay a double layer of this butcher paper down. And that's just to protect the table from getting damaged with the with the paint and the polyacrylic. So I just cut off a couple of sheets of that. And you guys could do this project outside, but it is a little windy, like I said, so I just wanna do it inside. And that's what I'm gonna paint the handles with first. And then here is the polyacrylic that I'm going to be using today. Premium water-based polyacrylic crystal clear top coat. It is the purple clear satin or the label's purple. And I did pick these up from Lowe's. And I'm going to be using these foam brushes today. It's supposed to make your paint not have streaks in it. So that's what we're gonna be using today. I'm so happy that I got this set. I will also link some down in the description. I love that this set had these skinny little brushes because they will be perfect for these handles. And then you'll also need some sandpaper or a sander. Today I'm just gonna be using this sponge that looks like um, crap, but it's, it's just a sponge that has um, sandpaper on it. Rob bought somewhere, not really sure where he got it, but I will try to find one of these on Amazon and link it for you guys as well. It is pretty cool because it has different strengths or different sandpaper quality. I don't even know what it's called. Are you stupid or something? But one is really soft and one is really, really rough. I'm just gonna be picking a side and sanding these really well because I did learn my lesson on that tray that you need to make sure that you sand it super well before you paint it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm not gonna make you guys watch the whole thing. I am gonna try to go against the grain this time. Last time I was just sanding like this with the grain. So I'm gonna try to go against the grain like this. So I just finished shaking my paint and now my head hurts, but I'm okay. <laughs> Stir it up a little bit with this paint stick and then get started painting. I am gonna paint just the top first. Let it dry for about an hour and then coat it again. Let it dry for another hour, flip it over, paint the back and then do the same thing with the sides. So it's really taking me over like three hours to get this project done. You could only let the paint dry for about 30 minutes, but I just wanna go ahead and make sure it's completely dry before I put it under my press. I'm gonna go ahead and get started painting, and I should get some painter's tape and mark where I want to start. I can't find any painter's tape, so I'm probably just gonna use this heat tape that I always use for pressing. I don't want that paint to go too low, just in case you were to use these spoons. I don't know if you'd want to use this spoon, maybe just use it as like a decoration. Probably so, but I kind of want to make it where you can use it. Probably right before the spoon bows in right here. So we'll try it right there. Try to get it as straight as possible. I don't know how long that's been off, but my camera turned off. I don't know why it's doing that lately. I hope you guys can see on the spatula how it bows upward and then this side bows the other way. So it would be this side is the top. 
I'm just gonna take a light coat of this, as light as I can do. I told you guys in the last video, I am not a painter. And I don't know about those little holes in the spoon. I don't know if I should be covering them, but. But basically I'm just trying to paint this way. You guys saw me paint right here this way, but I'm trying to paint away from the tape to hopefully keep it from going underneath that heat tape since I couldn't find the painter's tape. Let this dry for about 30 minutes to an hour and then I'm going to sand it and then paint it one more time and then we will polyurethane it or polycrylic it. Sand both sides really gently and then go ahead and put the polyacrylic on. I did go ahead and shake up this polyacrylic. I say polyacrylic, it's polyacrylic. But yeah, I already shook it. All right guys, so I have you guys on a box right now. Camera just keeps shutting off and I think there's a timer or something on there and I need to go into settings and learn how to set the timer off so that it quits shutting off every like two minutes. And I'm taking my little tiny brush or sponge brush and the polyacrylic and I'm just gonna put a nice little light coat. Kind of bubbly right now because I just finished shaking it. Put a nice light coat on the handles. Where I sanded it, I did also wipe off the handles after sanding so that we don't have any dust. just doing a nice light coat. Okay, so let that dry and we will do the other side. So after all of this painting that I did, Rob came home from work and told me that I should have just poured the paint into a jar and dipped the handles into the paint. Yeah instead of painting them like I did. And you can paint them if you want to, but it's a lot longer to paint them and would have been a lot faster just to dip them and wait for them to dry. I did want to tell you guys how nice these handles turned out. They actually feel really nice and soft and very smooth. Go ahead and take this little design, the Wesleys, and I'm just gonna tape it just like I told you guys. So I'm just gonna try to get it as centered as possible. I'm gonna fold it over a little bit so that I have a pull tab to kind of just pull up on the tape when it's done. The design is a little bit too big, but I'm just gonna go with it and as long as the date's on there and if the flower doesn't go all the way over, it's fine. I have a piece of butcher paper down on the press. I do have my second piece of butcher paper and I will just be setting it right over all of this. Just like that. My press gets pretty hot, so I normally do 380, but today we are gonna be doing 400 degrees, 50 seconds, and I hope this works out great, guys. And let's go ahead and press it. I did raise up this press a little bit, um, basically the pressure, because the thickness of the handles is a lot thicker than a t-shirt, obviously. So I just kind of turned it and turned it until I thought, or I hope, that it's good enough. And we'll just see. And if it's too high, I'll bring it down. If it's too low, I'll bring it up. I don't think the pressure is tight enough, so I'm gonna go a little bit more. And I was getting a little scared because it was making a sizzling noise, but maybe that's okay. Let me set you guys down. Oh my goodness. It was smoking for a reason made the paper super wet. Bamboo just has moisture in it. We're gonna go ahead and take it off. I hope it didn't burn. It might stick probably to the wood, but we'll see. I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew it. I put the press this time to 400 degrees and I knew I should have left it at 350 because what I always press at, or 380. I always press at 380 and today I decided to press at 400 degrees. This is the recommendation for sublimation, 400 degrees and my press always, always gets too hot. And I was so excited and I spent two days on this. 
I'm mad right now. Is the press just too hot? I don't get it. What happens when you get too confident? <laughs> I'm guessing that the press was too high. So don't know if I'll post this video. Um, I might have to go get new spoons. Dang it, I'm really sad.